right, we just got here. That's Hello right. again, everybody. I'm Nick Charles. And I'm Fred Hickman. But come back. And next to the story of a pipe dream that could come true for a 45-year-old pipe fitter from North Carolina who's just one long shot away from a million bucks. Come on, level with me on this. How many times have you watched somebody sink a rainbow three-point basket and said, I could do that? 45-year-old Bobby Shiver, though, probably never even considered the idea, having never played basketball. But suddenly, this pipe fitter from North Carolina is thinking about nothing else, since his name was drawn on a sweepstakes that will give him a single shot from the three-point line. If he makes it, he wins a million bucks. So, what does he bring to the line in the way of basketball experience? Not none at all, <laughs> really. I didn't play uh, basketball in high school, so I really, as far as playing basketball, hadn't got any background. So the contest sponsors flew in ex-NBA star Dave Cowens to Coach Shiver. So, Coach, how's his game? Well, he has no game. <laughs> he never played basketball, and, and I don't think he probably ever shot a basketball until he found out he was, had a chance to win a million dollars. Shiver owes his million-dollar shot to wife Vicky, who entered his name in the contest. First thing he did when he found out he'd won is go out and buy a basket and a ball. And nowadays, after work, it's Vicky who says, hey, let's uh, go out in the backyard and play basketball, honey. Well, mostly I say, come on now, we got to go practice. I'm usually his rebounder. <laughs> and if he makes the shot and wins the million? Oh, I just, I just don't know. I just can't imagine. But he's promised to buy me a red sports car, so I guess we'll go look at cars. <laughs> Bobby makes 32000 a year, keeping steam flowing as a pipe fitter. But if he handles the pressure and sinks that shot, coincidentally on Vicky's birthday, April 4th, during the NCAA Final Four weekend in New Orleans, she'll get a red sports car, he'll buy a tractor, and a pipe dream will come true for two people who never dreamed they'd care this much for basketball. No, no I wouldn't hang the dice on the window just yet, or the mirror. Anyway, time now to handle I'm the just finished and unfinished business. Me too. Of the sporting day, back to the rack for some college basketball. The North Atlantic Conference title game is over. Delaware, the Fighting Blue Hens have won. They're on their way to the NCAA tournament. Phoenix, burning up the league, has won 24 of 26 at home, and make that more now. They are putting the wood to the Warriors. The Nets lead at uh, the clip joint early. NHL Edmonton, Oilers in danger of missing the playoffs. First time in franchise history. Stevie Eiserman, three points in that one. It's in the follow-through, man. I'm Fred Hickman. I'm Nick Charles. See you tomorrow night. you got to watch it all the way through. This has been a presentation of CNN Sports. Treasury. Many words we use today originated during a colorful time of American technological history. We'll find out the origin of the word highball after this. We haven't always folded our flag this way. Today's fold is a reminder of the three-cornered hat worn by the soldiers of the American Revolution and is another part of our American military heritage. The word highball wasn't always the name of a cocktail or the description of a bad baseball pitch. In the early days of American railroading, before there were electric signals, a large ball was raised over the tracks to tell an engineer if it was safe to go on the next section of track. A highball meant full speed ahead. A string of these signals let the engineer highball down the track. It's a fact in the Library of Congress. Learn more about word origins in your library. Be right back. When Michael first came to the boys' club, he was seven years old. A tough kid who only came to play basketball. After a while, he got into other things. Michael. Like computers. Bye. Special tutoring. Thanks. You could see him changing, learning to believe in himself. Hey, Mikey. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> and this year, Michael won a scholarship. The first one in his family ever to go to college. You know, I'm going to miss this place. Yeah, well, this place is going to miss you, pal. And that's what the boys' club is all about. It's like someone's here to play basketball. We think every kid should have the chance to be the best he can. There will probably be times in the career of any service member when they will have to bring bad news up the chain of command. He's not going to like this. And the temptation will be there to make that news sound better than it is. He's not going to like this. Or even 
to shield commanders from hearing a bad report. He's not gonna like this. But look at it this way. Problems can't be solved unless the facts are known. If the chain of command thinks everything is all right, nothing will change. And that's a game that no one wins. He's not gonna like this. So no matter if your report is formal or informal, verbal or written, tell the whole story, good and bad. But he's gonna have to read it. Because it's the best way to ensure your personal integrity and a good way to ensure effective military units. Hey guys, want some advice on women? Take notes. Okay, now if you want to take a girl to a party, there's only one thing you have to do. Stay sober. Otherwise, we don't set one foot in your car. Not one ankle, not one knee, nothing. So the more you know about women, the more you know there's only one way you're going to get to go anywhere with us. Dry sober. And let us pick the radio stations. You and this steel spring have something in common. Both are designed to handle stress. Stress causes a little pressure here and there, and that's what keeps you and the spring moving along. But too much stress can push you out of shape physically and emotionally. Know your limits and learn when to take it easy. And if you do, you'll have no trouble bouncing back. 